right, British na national champs. I've been trying to download this file all week, but it's been like nine gigabytes. So I thought I'd just do the last couple kilometers of the men's. I'll do the women's as well tomorrow, hopefully. So we've got the three strongest guys of the day, James Knox, uh, Fred Wright, and Stevie Williams. It was a mega attritional race. The Simon car launched it uh, on the first lap, on the very first climb, uh, or the first proper climb, and it was just nails from then on. Basically, the whole field got dropped in the first lap or two. There were like 40 riders left, and it just kept on getting more and more attritional, um, and a really strong performance from James Knox. Power-wise, he did 320 normalized for about five and a half hours, and he weighs 58 kilos, so like 5.5 maybe, 5.4 was per kilo normalized for that long is ridiculous so it was a mega hard day so these are the strongest guys and i just want to show you like how it's kind of played out so james knox had been attacking loads he was whittling the group down he got rid of connor swift he got rid of sam watson he got rid of owen duel and um in reality he needs a longer climb he's a really really good climber uh used to have the comma like rock corver and things like that um, and he's also got top five in Lavernier, top 10 in Basque Country a couple times, things like that. Stevie Williams, again, has won Croatia race. Again, a super strong climber. He kept his powder dry. He really didn't do much. James Knox, much the same. He said he just wait for Ineos to burn themselves out. Now, Fred Wright, he really did nothing. He followed, he followed, he followed. He never made a move. And I think he knew if he went with James Knox or like, didn't necessarily go with him, but like, you know, really accelerated, he'd be in trouble. So again, on this descent, James Knox had big risk in the corner, that man. Um, and I thought he would have attacked around this corner because he actually had a decent gap. But Fred Wright closes it, no stress. I guess Fred Wright knows he's going to the tour. He doesn't want to crash. Um, and Steve Williams behind. Now, this is a pretty steep climb, the kind of the, like the last real opportunity to distance themselves before the 45 second Berg that finishes this race up Saltburn. Now, this is where a lot of the moves were made. It's kind of like false, not false, it's like 6% here, but it reach, it goes up to 15%. Now, watch Stevie Williams. He's in the smooring here. He's looking like he's going to do something, and um, he's kind of looking left, looking right. But he decides about now that it's time to go on at the saddle. It's kind of a soft move. He looks left. It's not really a mega attack. And then here he kind of goes for it. James Knox looks at Fred Wright and says, no, nah, I'm not closing it. And to be honest, like, I don't know if he could. Um, Steve Williams at this point with the camera, he looks like he's just got a massive gap. You can see up ahead, it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And this is where I think Fred Wright is so strong is that he's a lot bigger than these guys. He's in the big ring. He sprints across this gap and James Knox is struggling here. You can see like maybe the efforts were paid a little bit. He did like 380 normal so the last 20 minutes, which is ridiculous. Um, and Fred Wright goes straight over the top there. And this is it. You can see James Knox swinging all over the bike. Steve Williams again, and Fred Wright is just flying up. And this is why I think if he plays the it right in the tour, he can win a lot of stages because medium mountains like this, he shouldn't wait for the sprint. I know he has a good sprint, but if he attacks like this and rides solo, thanks for coming. Now, these guys worked well. Um, well, so it's sort of false flat downhill, like maybe three, four percent. So really one that you have to pedal. Fred Wright, again, not as um, big risk in the corner as James Knox. So, it, you know, it could have come back together. Although the two behind are obviously weaker than him in terms of on the flat, together they're not probably much weaker and they did work well together. Uh, I guess the thing is on that 45 second climb, you just hope he's burnt all his energy outside, but everyone's going flat out. So I think even if they caught him, it would have been it would have been tough. But I do think Fred Wright, the early Basque country stages could be a little bit too difficult for him. I think that will be more of a Bagatcha stage, someone similar, maybe Lulu. I don't think it will be someone as big as Fred Wright because I just think it will be ridden too hard. And it's quite a hard day all round. Um, but I may eat my words on that and he might still be there. But I think he's an interesting rider, Fred Wright. He's obviously good on the time trials, good at sprinting in a reduced group. Also, as shown here, he like, can go solo. And so I think it gives him a lot of opportunities. And I think it really is like, you know, you've got to think of him as a classic rider, really. That is what he is good at. Um, and I think as a stage hunter in the tour, um, you know, he's got a lot of options. And again, I think even the medium mountain stages, he can do well. Obviously not like 20 minute, half an hour climbs necessarily towards the finish, but five, 10 minute climbs, especially if they're not steep, he can be really, really strong. I think him and Mahoric are pretty similar riders. And I just think it's been unlucky that he hasn't won um, a race. Obviously in the world series pretty close and the Tory has been close as well. So it's just more like the sprint. He sometimes come up against just slightly better riders. And you can see here, the guys are really riding full um you know there's no they're not messing around um but round this corner just watch fred wright he doesn't take it slow um but when you watch james Knox, it absolutely launches it around the corner um and i think again it just goes to show like you can see james Knox, the speed he's carrying at this point they're actually not that far away 
Um, I think the thing is that the descent is not that technical. I think if this is a technical descent, maybe, you know, six, seven percent, like look at the speed they're carrying around there as well. Maybe eight percent, nine percent, even six percent downhill with some proper hairpins. I think James Knox gets back on with Stevie Williams in the in the wheel. Um, but look at this now. Now it's really open descent. I assume the wind most likely is probably coming off the coast. Headwind, you know, it's not going to help the chases as much. Um, well, I guess it kind of does, but it is just irrelevant on the, on the, something like this to actually catch someone. You ought to go so much quicker. And even though they can see him, which is like a decent advantage, um, or they're able to see the motorbike, like it's it's still just really tough to actually bring them back. But I think the National Chance was really like interesting race because it was so aggressive so early. And I think that maybe goes to show that like Fred Wright is really good on these races where it is super, super hard from the off and not, um, you know, maybe a more traditional kind of puncher similar uh, course where it's just like one climb really hard. He's actually good on the ones that go over and over again. And I was kind of surprised. I th didn't think he'd be here. I thought it would be more climbery than this. I thought, you know, obviously James Knox, Steve Williams. I mean, Ineos had a shocker, but we could talk about that in another video. Um, maybe I should um, why Ineos had gone to gone to the dogs but uh, I think it's interesting that he does manage to get around on a course as hilly as this and I think he could also go to show that there is a lot of opportunity um, because when he gets in a situation like this no one's got as, as much punch as him the TV coverage is about to get pretty shaky as we go towards the bottom of this they streamed it on 4G which is all well and good but unfortunately the 4G around there is absolutely useless in the key part which is the descent into the into the final climb the final climb is maybe a 45 second steep part and drags on to a minute or so um so again it's kind of one of these things where you think it's this isn't the footage breaking up or anything this is literally just like oh sorry this is the footage breaking up nothing um to do with your internet again you can see james Knox going down but it's just not that technical into the running and then when we go zoom up to fred wright in a minute you'll see like he's now on the coast going around this corner it's a pretty technical running and it really goes to show um, that actually earlier on the positioning was so important in order to have a good result here because it's like five seconds around the corner and you've got to do a lot of watts on a steep climb like this, especially a short one to move up. You know, you can't just do a little bit more. You've got to be like whacking out the corners. Again, turns left. This is onto the climb, basically. They zoom back and you see James Knott's already distanced Steve Williams. And then this is the main part of the climb. So just a big surge around this right-hand hairpin and then there's a left-hand hairpin. And this, you're like, oh, James Knott's like... He's not far off. And this is why I actually think Fred Wright was just the strong guy on the day because James Knox is like flying here and obviously puts in a big dig. But then round this corner, doesn't park up, but just doesn't like go into the next gear. And here Fred Wright is still out the saddle. And I think when James Knox sits down in the saddle in like a couple seconds time, you really get to see like this head on shot. This is when you realize they're not close. James Knox is about to sit down and that's it. Like as soon as you sit down on a climb like this, you know, the watts have gone um, you know, nowhere near as strong. And Fred Wright is absolutely flying. And as soon as it gets to the flat section, there's no chance because he's just going to be doing more watts um, total. And, you know, it does get pretty flat, this top section. So anyway, this is basically the end of the video. Fred Wright managed to get the win. It's a shame I can't give all the footage, but downloading like nine gigabytes or whatever it was for the men's and women's was a 10-hour stream. is just too much for the Wi-Fi, it seems. Um, but yeah, I should hopefully have the women's video out tomorrow because that, again, was a very exciting race just because it was so aggressive. And this race really reminded me of a, a UK race where it's just nuts from the beginning. Like people in UK amateur races just go mental. And it was literally exactly the same, but just with the national champs instead. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one.